Randy, they say love's a battlefield. Ooh, carnage. Just absolute carnage. I think I'm going to stick with this uh, portrait orientation because it's looks better on Instagram. And, and I'll be honest with you, I, I think the interaction with you guys is better on Instagram than it is on YouTube. So I think this is where I need to be. And I'm good with that. So here's a quick look over of your beautiful Magnetone Troubadour. I'll do a quick walkthrough. We have, let's see, start on a power supply end. As you can see, I rebuilt everything on these um, turret strips, rather terminal strips, using existing chassis uh, hardware through holes. So there's no new holes in the chassis. It's nice and clean. We have your new backup rectifier diodes for your 5Y3. We have uh, this little, uh, actually a large 10 watt brown devil to replace the other one, which was this guy who really is the devil. Instead of uh, measuring 350 ohms, this thing is a- uh, To infinity and beyond. The other one which was severely damaged just through the decades. Obviously your initial filter cap, your reservoir cap here, um, which is also gonna feed the plate supply in a output transformer primary. There's the center tap there. And we have a decoupling resistor slash dropping resistor, which then goes over into the uh, screen grid filters, or screen supply filters for the B plus. And then uh, boop, up here, yellow wire, over to the blue jumper, beautiful. And from there, we have this dropping resistor going over to the phase inverter supply. Yeah, the grounds are separated. This should be, and usually is grounded with the power amp stuff. And then we have the preamp filter supply here. And uh, let me get in there for you. Now one of, of your wires I was able to reuse, and then I ran another red lead over, which goes over to the yeah, V1 tube which are your, are your two gain stages. And then we have your, obviously the, uh, the phase inverter over here. We have uh, all new cathode bypass caps. Plate resistors are great. New phase inverter coupling caps. Uh, your other ones were uh, literally destroyed. Ooh, doggy. Your uh, phase inverter input cap is new and I actually took one of these out of my stash. I, I hand test all these uh, old vintage ones that was given from the, uh, Electronics professor over at Orange Coast College. So that's going to treat you nice. Here's your uh, cathode resistor for your bias supply and the bypass cap for that, also new. What else can I show you here? Obviously cleaned up. I mean, let's just make the assumption that everything's been cleaned and lubed and all that stuff. Retention in the sockets and talk about hair raising or knuckle biting when you're um, retentioning these porcelain sockets, you know, one wrong move and you're cracking them or chipping them. So that's about it. Um, obviously made the move from these cap can, these multi-section cap cans here into a discrete components because you control where they're grounded. You get a higher quality cap in there as well. Something that could live in a, a high temp environment like these, uh, these mod caps, which are um, 105 degree rated. And then uh, these guys had the preamp and the phase inverter grounding at the same place, which, you know, makes for a noisy amp. But she's dead quiet now. Zero background noise. This is the quietest restoration I've ever produced. And I'm extremely happy. 
Um, got some nice silicon here just to keep everything nice, nice and tidy. And uh, what else can I tell you? Oh yeah, kind of a pleasant surprise that yeah, the filament supply has a center tap and it, it isn't grounded on one end of the chassis, which um, which I found surprising given the, the age of the amp. Um, let's see, and I thought that I was initially gonna have to float a pair of 100 ohm uh, artificial center tap resistors off of the the, the, the bias ground so I can uh, float it above ground for additional noise rejection, but that wasn't even necessary. So just very, very pleased with this, Randy, I'm telling you. And you heard the sound clip. She's just a grindy, mid-rangey beast. She's um, she's biased pretty cool. Um, whereas, um, you know, you're looking at cathode bias pair of 6v6s and push-pull. Um, you could bias them up to 100%. Um, I buy some to around 95, to be honest with you. Um, these are coming in around, you know, 65% of their max dissipation. Given the bias arrangement, it, it should not sound as good as it does. And, and like I was saying, I was tempted to say, just leave it like it is. It's just beautiful. Um, what will you get from warming it up? Uh, increased volume, increased headroom. Um, the drive characteristics will change a bit. Another thing that uh, that surprised me pleasantly was the range of the tone control, which I found very usable, given how simplistic it is. Very nice. What else can I tell you? There's your, uh, your new grounded power cord. Probably the coolest, this is nerd stuff, but the coolest strain relief I've, I've ever seen. This little Heiko part. It's actually, it's actually a hard plastic part and it, it's not like the softer rubber part. Now, did it age and become harder? Yeah, that's possible. But I've never seen one like this where uh, the compressive bit has this particular shape to it. And it's hard to capture that. But just take my word for it, super nice. Let's uh, spin her around carefully. And then I'll show you my little trick for standing up these chassis. Whoop, there it is. Is that a magnetic parts tray? Why, yes, it is. Well, is it stable? It sure is after you break off the magnet, clean both mating surfaces, and then use some nice epoxy. Watch this. It's not going anywhere in any direction. Now, you don't want to make assumptions about how you could handle this. You still want to be incredibly careful, but for display purposes, this is totally fine. And that's what we're doing here. Running some JJ's for your pleasure. Um, again, you're going to need those uh, two new 12AX7s here on a preamp end. You will uh, find that these act more like 6L6s and that they're that's basically the... That's basically what these are inside of a, a shorter glass envelope. So if you want to change again the, uh, the overdrive characteristics in the headroom, the perceived headroom anyway, then you can switch over to, um, I don't want to say legitimate, but to more classic 6v6 tubes. You know, those could be your, if you're a new production, I love the TAD stuff. Um, but otherwise these JJ sound really nice. And that's about it. This uh, TAD uh, 5Y3 is acting exactly like a 5Y3 should. I find that the Sobtex and, and the JJs act more like 5V4s or greater with less of that uh, voltage drop that you're expecting out of a 5Y3. So again, your mileage may vary, but that's just one reporter's opinion. Um, as we discussed, she is ready to go home back into your custody. I'm going to miss this thing. I feel like I've been through the ringer with this lady here. Just, she came out beautiful, man. So happy. So happy with how she came out. A lot of small issues that combined into a, a conflagration of issues, but all of them have been addressed. I was going to add some MOVs to the, uh, the plate supply for a little additional uh, protection for your uh, output transformer, but I honestly don't think it's necessary. 
I may sleep on that tonight, but uh, that's that's sort of where I am with it. And I think she's good to go. We're going to put her back into her original cabinet and give her a go through that juicy Alnico speaker. And then see what we can see, my friend. Take care. Bye-bye. Tune in out. Tune in out. Tune in out.